Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner, and we're going to talk about good versus bad acoustic guitar recordings. Now, you've probably heard me say this at least once, probably a thousand times. Get it right at the source. But if you're new and you... If... If... If you're new, you might not know what that means. Get it right, the source has to do with this mindset we tend to get into when we're recording music, where we'll just kind of record it, and good enough is good enough, and we'll get really excited about getting to the mixing part, where we'll use all the plugins to make it sound amazing. And we think the difference between my songs and major label release songs is the mix. Now, on the flip side, you can take great tracks and mix them poorly and make them sound crappy, but more often what happens is folks aren't recording very well, then they're getting stuck in the mixing process trying to make them sound good when that's not really possible. Mixing bad tracks will give you slightly better sounding tracks. If you want great mixes, you need to start with great tracks. That's the idea of Get It Right, the source. But a question when I talk about that that I get sometimes is, well, what, what is a good sounding acoustic guitar? What, what, how do I know when I've gotten it right at the source? And the way I like to do that is I play a little game with myself called the Get It Right at the Source game. I don't really call it that, but it, it just felt appropriate. Where I will, the goal of this game is to have my raw tracks sound like a finished mix. Like if I record a song today, before I ever throw a plug in on there, I want it to sound like a finished mix. Now, does that ever happen? No, but I try. That's like the, the gold standard, the thing I'm aiming for. And if that's kind of my posture towards recording, then the tracks are gonna sound really good and then I'm gonna be able to get a great sounding mix. On the flip side, if I rush through the recording process because I'm so excited to mix and I do a bad job, I'm going to be kicking myself. So we're going to listen to some examples of some bad acoustic guitar recordings today to kind of make my point and let you hear kind of a, an A-B comparison between a good recording and a bad recording. So here's a session in Studio One, and I've got two acoustic guitars that I've recorded. Now, these were both recorded in stereo, which means I used two microphones. In case you think recording in stereo makes everything better, it doesn't. The first recording here in blue is bad. The green one is good. Now, these two recordings happened about eight years apart from one another. The one on the left was from an album I recorded back, I recorded it in 2009, released it in 2010, uh, while I was living in Fort Wayne, Indiana, in an apartment. Uh, and this one was recorded a couple years ago, uh, 2017. So eight year difference, much better sound on the second one, in my opinion, and much easier to mix, much more right. That's not the best way to say that, than the first one. Now, I'm going to play the first one for you. I'm going to play both of them for you. But keep in mind, it's not that this first one is just so obviously bad. Like, it's distorted and, and crazy sounding. That's obviously bad. I'm talking about tracks that could have been better uh, and really end up shooting you in the foot when it comes time to mix. I almost said biting you in the foot or shooting you in the butt and that neither one of those work. So let's just take a listen and we'll talk about what we hear. So here is the first one, go. Now, depending on your experience level, you might listen to that and say, hot dog, that's great. Uh, or you might listen to that and say, oh, it's really muddy. Uh, I'm more in the second camp. Actually, I'm in both camps. I think that's a great chord progression. Um, it hits like every chord. Um, it goes from C and there's like a G minor in there and a D7, I think. Anyway, uh, it's a cool chord progression. And that kind of distracts us from the fact that the recording just isn't all that great. Story time. Here's how I record this. Like I said before, I was in an apartment in Fort Wayne, Indi Indiana. Indiana. Nothing wrong with apartments. I just remember that that's where I was. And my thought was... There's a lady with two kids that lives right above me. I don't want to pick that up. So I'm going to put the microphones as close to the guitar as possible. I used two microphones. I remember they were M-Audio something or another. There's two different mics. Had them about like this. And this is about how close I had them to the guitar. They were like this, just right up on the guitar. And in my headphones, which were the same ones I still use today, those HD 280s from Sennheiser, it sounded good. It had like some width to it. It sounded big, beefy, full of all those words. And I said, hot dog, let's go. And I recorded. And that was, I think it was a Saturday. And I think I recorded like all 10 songs that day. I was just plowing through like monster recording guy. Came back a week or two later to listen to what I had recorded, to bask in my own glory, and I was disappointed. Why? Because the recordings were generally like this. They were too muddy. There was too much of that low mid-range, the woo, woo, woo part of the sound, that 
it, I realized, huh, I didn't, it didn't sound like that on headphones. Turns out, if I had stopped, listened to the recording back on my speakers, I would have immediately noticed, oh, that's too muddy and not very bright. Let me fix that. And the way I would have fixed that is probably backed away from the microphones a little bit to capture a more natural sound. There's this thing that happens with directional microphones like these. I mean, any, any microphone that picks up in one direction, this will happen. It's called proximity effect. The closer you get to the source, the bigger the low end is. Acoustic guitar has a lot of low end coming out of that sound hole in the middle. And if you get too close to it, you're going to get this boominess. If you get too far away, it's going to sound thin and weird. I didn't want it to sound thin and weird. So I got it close and I live to regret it. So let me show you why that's a problem. Uh, I've got an EQ on this track. So you may think, okay, Joe, it's just the low mids. It's not a big deal. Why don't you just EQ that out? Well, let's, let's try that. So we can immediately see like right here in the visual of this frequency readout, here's where all the grossness is happening. It's like an extra boost. Look at that right there. It's kind of that sound when my pick goes down and hits the strings. So let's EQ that out. That's the sound. Let's pull it down. And then we encounter more problems. I'll explain in a second. Let me grab, let me grab my guitar. If you think about microphones like flashlights, a flashlight, if you put it really close to whatever you're trying to see, you're only going to see a small area. Microphones are kind of the same. If the mic is too close, it's only going to hear a little bit of the area. So, for example, these mics were like here and here or something, and they were too close. I wasn't getting a lot of the sound of the pick on the guitar. I wasn't getting the overall sound of the guitar. I was getting like a snapshot of a very small part of the guitar. If I just pulled the mic back a little bit, suddenly the 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 pattern the thing that it's picking up would have been greater less boomy and i would have heard more guitar so when i take care of the boominess a little bit here then it just seems like it just causes other problems to raise their hand now the guitar sounds kind of cheap and plasticky actually it sounds like i don't hear the pick noise like that nice crisp sound of the pick hitting the string so let's boost the top end see if we can fix that Okay, that's, that's kind of it, but now the guitar sounds kind of plasticky, and it's not a cheap guitar, it's that, it's that Taylor 314 over there, um, but it just, it just sounds wimpy. So when it sounds kind of plasticky, I tend to go for the mid-range and try to find where's that really fake plastic sound and pull that down with a little bit of EQ, so let's try that. And, it, and it's okay. And I realize I'm gonna, there are going to be some comments that say, Joe, that sounds better than anything I've recorded. Or, Joe, that's a great sounding guitar. Once you EQ'd it, it was perfect. The thing is, our ears, I'm going to turn this EQ off. Our ears are world class at ignoring things. Like, when I started playing that at the very beginning of this video, when I first played it, the first thing you probably heard was that whoa, whoa. But then your ears adjusted. And you kind of, your ears almost like they EQ things out. They ignore that kind of low mid womp womp. For me, I've trained my ears to not ignore it to the point where I actually get a headache when those frequencies are too loud. Whether it's acoustic guitar or bass especially, I'll get this, you know where that like bump is in the back of your head? Do you have a bump? I have a bump. Uh, right around there, like a tension headache comes up right here whenever it's too loud. It's kind of a superpower because um, then I know to go address those low mid frequencies. But even so, once we address them, we got it sounding okay, um, but it could have sounded so much better right out of the box by just backing the microphones away from the guitar. I didn't do that and it doesn't sound as good. And the final mixes I don't think were that great either because of it. There was only so far we could go. We had to kind of manufacture the sound we wanted with EQ, and the best way to manufacture a sound is to put the mic in front of it and capture it the right way the first time. So let's cleanse our aural palette, and let's listen to a different guitar. So clean slate, I'm gonna hit play, listen to how this one sounds, and then think about how it sounds compared to the first one you heard.
night and day difference. There's still a little bit of whoop whoop in there. That's going to happen with acoustic guitar. Some of recording is a trade-off where you say, if I back it farther away, I lose the warmth. So I want to have a little, maybe just a little bit extra warmth that I can easily EQ out just a little bit um, to maintain the overall kind of cool warmth of it. But what do you hear in the top end of this guitar? Granted, it's a different guitar. It's a darker guitar, actually. But you hear that the pick on the guitar. And I use the same picks. I've used the same picks for 10 years. Those little, I don't have one here, the little really thick Jazz 3 picks. So they're very thick sounding. They don't have a lot of pick noise, but I was able to position the microphones in such a way a little bit farther from the guitar that they picked up some of that sound and it automatically sounds like a better sounding guitar. We can go take out a little bit of that low mid range if we want, um, just to tame it down a little bit. And that is, to me, that's a get it right at the source guitar. I had to do one little EQ move to make it sit a little bit better, but it's got the nice top end. It sounds like a guitar. I literally, when I listen to these two, I'll turn the EQ off, go back and forth. Um, like, close your eyes for a second. I'm gonna play the first one and then the second one. Here's the first one. hear that difference? When you go back and forth between them, it is a night and day thing. It sounds like the, 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 the older guitar sounds muffled. It almost sounds like somebody got a giant wool sock and put it over the guitar and then we recorded it. It's a funny mental picture. The second guitar sounds like, ah, oh, the fog has been lifted. This sounds like an acoustic guitar. And I, we can see how if all you ever heard was the first one, you would think, okay, that's just, that's just what acoustic guitar sounds like. But now you've heard the second one and you realize, ah, there is a better tone out there that I can capture just with the microphones. Now, to be fair, different set of microphones, different set of preamps, different guitar. So it's not a super fair comparison. Um, but the main differences here, and I will stand by it, are not that I use different microphones but that I put the microphones in different positions. If I had both sets of microphones still today, I could set them up in that same position and get similar sounds uh, because this one, I remember as clear as day, I was playing like this and those mics were just like right here. I mean, inches away from the guitar and that's how I spent the day that day. Um, but now you get to benefit from my mistakes. So there you go. Uh, but that though, that is getting it right at the source. That is, to me, what a get it right at the source acoustic guitar needs to sound like. If yours sounds more like this one, if yours sounds worse or better, um, if yours doesn't sound like a great finished mix, then let's start working on that. Doesn't mean you have to go buy a $3,000 preamp. That's not the answer. The answer is probably you have the equipment you need to make a good recording. Let's spend some time. It's time well spent just moving that microphone around recording some test recordings and then listening back on your system. And over time, as you do that, you're gonna to start to find these spots for each guitar that sound really great on that guitar. And it might not be what you expect, but the more you do it, the more you'll find those. And what you'll find is if you go listen to this song, this is a song called Help Me from my EP Rain, or if you go listen to the song No Time from my album Out of Indiana, You'll hear, even though it's mixed, that's this is what the guitar sounds like, right? The mixed guitar sounds a lot like the raw recorded guitar, and that's the point. That's the point, right? You can make some EQ moves, you can make some subtle changes, but the soul of the recording is captured at the microphone. Write that down. Write that down. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more like this with different instruments, maybe vocals, maybe a few other things, let me know. Uh, I've made lots of mistakes, so I would just love to show those off to you and do some more comparisons of what, what a good and bad sounding recording sounds like in different context. Otherwise, if you haven't checked out my five-step mix guide, it's free, by the way. It's not a paid thing. Just go to fivestepmix.com, shoot me your email. I'll send you the guide. It'll help you get better mixes. We'll all be happy. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.